Welcome to section 8, Application Protocol Analysis 1. In this section, we're going to take a look at DHCP analysis. We're going to investigate how a computer gets an IP address as well as other fields and data. HTTP analysis, which we use every day browsing the internet, very common thing to have to investigate. And FTP analysis, including the different secure versions of FTP. This is video 8.1, DHCP analysis. In this video, we're going to take a look at how DHCP works, some of the fields that are within the DHCP protocol, watch a client retrieve an IP address, and really take a look at what happens with DHCP when a client requests for an address and receives responses. So as usual, let's start a packet capture. And what I'm going to do is release the address on my computer here and then renew it. What we can do is with ipconfig slash release on a Windows computer, we can release our address. And then if we do ipconfig slash renew, it will get us a new address. Now if we take a look at ipconfig slash all, we should be able to see our address is assigned. Very good. And we'll stop our capture. And of course with our big packet capture here we're going to want to only pick out the DHCP traffic. So you would assume you could go up to the display filter and type DHCP just like we've done for the other protocols and just push enter and it works. But we see that there's a red bar up there. DHCP is not valid. Now why is that? because the display filter is actually boot p. DHCP is based off of boot p. Boot p was the predecessor protocol to DHCP. So in Wireshark they use the predecessor's protocols filter. So you want to use boot p. So if we use boot p we'll see that we have our DHCP release and discover. So this first packet here is the release. So my system already had an IP address and it wanted to get rid of it. So it sent a packet to the DHCP server, which is 77.1 here, and it said, please get rid of my address. And if we look into our DHCP details here, you see it says bootstrap protocol. That's where boot P comes from. And we scroll down to the bottom, you see options. And if you look at option 53, it says we have a release. So that's where it's requesting to get rid of its address. The system then at that point has no address and the local client erases the IP address from its information on the network interface card. Then after that, I initiated the DHCP renew command, which told it to go get an address. Now I did this because my system had already been up and had already retrieved a DHCP address on boot before I did my video capture. Commonly a system will retrieve IP information and other configuration options from a DHCP server on boot of the operating system. But since my system had already had an address I had to get rid of it and then forcibly tell it to get a new one with that slash renew command. When a system requests for an address it initiates with a discover request. And you can see that the discover, which down here we have 50, option 53, discover, it sent it out to a broadcast, all 255s. That's because the client doesn't have an IP address. You see it has 0000 as its source. It doesn't know where it needs to go to go talk to the DHCP server. So it sends it out to a broadcast address hoping that anybody will respond to its request for a DHCP server. And so what that is, is the discover packet is asking for a DHCP server. It says, I'm trying to discover a server. If you have multiple servers on a subnet, it, you may get a different server offering itself from time to time. That can cause problems sometimes depending on your network design. If you have a simple network, such as a home network, and you have two DHCP servers, most likely one of those is, is by accident. And you can have that problem when people bring in home wireless routers or something like that into a workplace, and they don't turn off the DHCP server, it can cause problems like this. 
So looking for offer packets sometimes is useful in packet captures because you may not necessarily want to see them. They, that may be a bad thing. If you happen to see offers from a server address that doesn't make any sense according to your network design, then that's a red flag. And you can, of course, right click on the offer and select that as a filter so that you can filter all of your packet captures off of, based off of just the offer. And you see that we've only pulled out the offers here. So if we had a whole bunch of offers from a bunch of different servers, that could be a problem. If we go back to our standard boot P filter, you'll see after the offer where the server is now responding to our broadcast that says, yes, I am a DHCP server, you can use me. I then send out for my client a request. And you can see down here in the options that I'm actually requesting a specific address. Now this you would not normally see on a new system that just booted up. But because my system here, the client, already knew that it had a previous address, it kept that information saved, even though it was not configured in the network card, it requested that specific address to renew it and put it back into its configuration. You can see that it also knows now the server. So it, it sends it out to the server, but it doesn't come from a layer 3 IPv4 address here because it doesn't have one yet. It's requesting it. So it still sends it out to the broadcast, but it says, hey server 77.1, please give me 77.160. And the server then says, yes, I acknowledge you. And by the way, it's okay. You're allowed to use that IP address as well as here are some additional information. So you're using the 77.1 DHCP server. Oh, and by the way, here's how long your lease time is. It's good for one day. That can be customized. Here's your subnet mask. Here's the domain name, if applicable. Here's the router, which is your default gateway. And here are some DNS servers that you can use. And you may see additional options in here. These option numbers reflect a whole bunch of different things that you can configure in DHCP. It's not just for IP addresses. You'll see this commonly used with uh, voice over IP phones because you can pass different options such as option 43. You actually tell it what VLAN it needs to belong to and force it to the other VLAN. And then you can also tell it where the TFTP server is to retrieve firmware information. All sorts of different things that you can send to a device to automatically configure it. That's why they call it the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. It's not just for IP. If you want to learn more about it, you can, of course, take a look at the RFC. The RFC for DHCP, remember this is the upgraded version of BootP, is 2131. And you see it's quite a lengthy document. There's quite a bit in here. And it goes through a lot of the functionality of DHCP. Now it will not include every single option and every single thing that you can configure because some of them are vendor specific. And of course DHCP has been extended since 1997 with additional added on features. Then our next two packets we see DHCP inform and these are requests from my client now that it has its layer 3 IPv4 address. It's now requesting from the server additional parameters. And you can see them listed down here. Here's the additional parameters it wants. It's looking for static routes, any NetBIOS information, uh, any additional vendor-specific information, that option 43 I was talking about. Anything like that, it's requesting from the server. And if it happens to have it, then the server would respond and say, yes, by the way, I have the following additional information for you. And so that's the basics of DHCP. It's a very simple protocol. A little bit more complex than DNS, but still relatively simple, very useful. There is a IPv6 version of DHCP, and as well as many other ways of addressing IPv6 hosts. Up next, we're going to take a look at HTTP in HTTP Analysis 1.